Hello everyone, real quick update at the start. If you're watching this on release day, there might not be anything different, but after about a week or so, I'll be changing the channel icon and name. I'll talk a bit about that at the end, or if you really want, here's a brief write up on screen right now. Pause if you care to read it. Anyway, today we're looking at the Pokemon character chart. As a reminder, or if you haven't seen my previous videos, these charts are supposed to be a way of visualizing the characters and character dynamics of a show. Really, any show, but I'm a weeb, so what can I say? Episodes go horizontally and characters vertically, and a cube indicates that a character appears in that episode. Previously, we looked at One Piece, but even then, I knew that I really wanted to compare it to Pokemon. That's because despite being over 1,000 episodes long, just like One Piece, a typical Pokemon episode is structured very differently. There's of course a core cast including Ash and Pikachu and his crew which is switched out every couple of series and Team Rocket. But then you have secondary characters who would drive the plot of that episode but rarely if ever appear again, as opposed to One Piece where characters often reappear. And you can really see that for the early series on the Pokemon chart. For the moment I'm excluding the Pokemon themselves, we'll look at them a bit later, but as you can see aside from our core cast at the bottom, the chart is fairly sparse as we go along. Here's Tracy replacing Brock for a bit, but then it's more or less the same until we reach the advanced generation where May and Max replace Misty and Brock, and full disclosure, that's more more or less where I fell off from the show. So I expected that format to continue, except that's not what happens. Pokemon changed, and that's what I want to talk about today. I should say though, if you're a hardcore Poke fan, there likely isn't anything new here for you that you don't know. My time with the franchise has long passed now. I'm more of a stats fan, so even if it's not anything new for you, hopefully this is just a different perspective of things you're a fan of. Anyway, so yeah, let's take a step back. How did I make these? Well, as usual, I wrote a code in Python that effectively does the following. First, we go to the Bulbapedia page for episode 1 and find the character section, where the wiki has separated this into human characters and Pokemon characters. The human list is fairly straightforward, we just collect the names in that episode. At the end, we'll have a dictionary of characters, and for each character, a list of episodes that they appear in. The Pokemon one is where things get a little bit more interesting. For example, Ash's Pikachu should be counted differently to a wild Pikachu, which should also be counted differently from Richie's Pikachu. Luckily, the items in the parentheses here can be used to do that, but they're kind of formatted inconsistently, which made things annoying. For example, in episode 4, this little star for Gary Squirtle will haunt me for the rest of my days. So, if a Pokemon was stated to belong to a unique character, they themselves would be considered unique. For example, in my database, Pikachu is listed as Pikachu Ash which distinguishes it from Pikachu Richie. Again, just as with the humans, at the end we're left with a dictionary of Pokemon, and for each Pokemon a list of all the episodes that they appeared in. But then there's also the non-unique characters and Pokemon. For example, if a wild Pidgey appears in one episode, and then later on another wild Pidgey appears, it's considered the same Pidgey. Unless, of course, it is somehow distinguished as being unique by the wiki. And yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. Conceptually it's pretty simple, but I actually had some annoying difficulties trying to get this to work. Um, uh, yeah, so with all that out of the way, uh, let's dissect this thing. Again, you can really see this transition going from this very sparse, unstructured part to the more blocky structure here. The advanced generation has a bit of that, but I think this block-like structure really starts here in Diamond and Pearl, and as we'll see in a bit, gets kicked into overdrive in black and white. There are around 1,250 characters over 1,231 episodes, meaning that on average, each episode introduces 1.01 characters. And it's really consistent, leading to this really straight diagonal line. Compare this with the One Piece character chart, which has a bit more wiggle to it, especially towards the later arcs up here. Anyway, the character chart is nice, but if we want to get some useful information out of it, we're going to need to use some tables. Here I've arranged the table according to the characters that appear the most often. Unsurprisingly, Ash is at the top. James and Jesse are next, with James appearing one whole episode more than Jesse. I did find it interesting how much more often Nurse Joy appears over Officer Jenny, about twice as often. Nurse Joy even appears more than Misty does. And then there's Gary Oak. Uh, given how vivid he is in my mind, I was surprised to see that he w doesn't actually even crack the top 20, appearing only 46 times. Actually, exactly one episode more than Ash's later rival, uh, Paul, apparently. And this is where I started to notice something, though I think Max and May actually will exemplify this a bit better. They're introduced around episode 275 and appear in 190 episodes, but that's not what I care about. 
If we look at this table, we can see that they last appear in episode 1217 all the way at the end of the series. And yeah, I confirmed it is actually them. So despite them appearing primarily in one series, they do reappear in the show. And in a show where characters are kind of one and done, I thought that was interesting and worth kind of delving a little bit deeper into it. Can we quantify that? Some sort of reoccurrence factor that lets us find the characters that, while not always the focus of the show, stay throughout the series. So here's how I went about that. We have the beginning and ending episodes, but what about the quote-unquote middle episode? One way to do that is just to take the average across all the episodes. So if a character appears in episodes 1 through 5, uh, then the average is just 3. So we would say that their middle episode is 3. Easy. Except there are actually some problems with this. First is that the average is very sensitive to outliers. So for example, let's say that they appear in episodes one through four and then appear one more time in episode 1001. Well, now the average is 202.2. So even though the character appears primarily in episodes one through four, their quote unquote middle is thrown way out because of that one appearance in episode 1001. So it's not really representative of the character in any way. In situations where you have a list and it's meaningful to sort that list like episode numbers, then you also want to look at the median, which is just the middle value of that sorted list. In this situation, the median is nice because it's not as sensitive to outliers. No matter how big we make that other number, the median is always three. But then you notice something if we don't have an outlier, then the average and the median are equal. Whereas if we have a strong outlier, then the average can be smaller or larger than the median, depending on which way the outlier is going. So for my reoccurrence factor, I just took the average and divided it by the median. It essentially just gives us a score for how often that character appears outside of their main chunk of the series. Here's the character table now ordered by the top reoccurrence factors. So it's Sabrina, Blaine, and Drake with some pretty high reoccurrence factors. And while I think it's cool to see these characters again, a lot of that has to do with the fact that they just don't show up a lot in the series at all, only appearing in three episodes. Like, take a look at how Sabrina and Blaine are listed in episode 1103. They're uh, silhouettes, which, I don't know, just feels like it shouldn't count. I want to see characters who reoccur, not literal shadows of their former selves. So I put a condition that the character has to appear at least 10 times in order for them to be considered. Now we get something that's a little bit more reasonable. Tracy is the character with the highest reoccurrence. Here's a list of the episode season. He appears pretty consistently between 84 and 116 and then occasionally shows up through the rest of the series. He's not always in the episode physically. In 147 he appears as a flashback, in 773 he is listed as a screen. Yeah, we, we also see Gary's cheerleaders and Gary in second and third. It surprised me that the cheerleaders beat out Gary here, but I think that has more to do with their lower number of appearances skewing the statistics. They're definitely on the lower end of that 10 cutoff off that we put. Either way, no sign of Paul here, so Gary better rival confirmed. We also see Oak and Misty and Professor Birch and Ash's mom and so on and so on. We can also look at the characters with small reoccurrence factors. These are just the characters that appear ahead of their main bulk in the series. They're the ones that are being kind of set up for later, almost One Piece-esque. There's not really a lot of them though, so we see Lance and Steven Stone is not far behind. Battle Judge is the referees that appear during gyms and matches and stuff like that. I'm not as familiar with the rest of the characters here, but still, Steven and Lance are fairly important in the story, so it's cool seeing them pop up here as characters that are being set up for later. Either way, looking at this list, I think this reoccurrence factor is picking out some notable characters. They're obviously not the most important characters, but oftentimes in analyses like this, finding the most important characters is easy. It's easy to say that Ash, Brock, Misty, they're the important characters. It's harder to find some sort of measure that'll pick out the more somewhat nuanced characters, and that's what we're trying to do here. I did also look at some other stuff as well because the reoccurrence factor is not perfect, but nothing really stood out enough to justify making this video longer than it is, and we haven't even gone to the Pokemon yet. Which I guess we can do now. Compared to the show without Pokemon, the character chart with Pokemon is much, much larger. With on average 3.8 characters being introduced per episode, the total number of characters is a whopping 4,703 roughly 3,500 of which are Pokemon, meaning that there is a 3 to 1 ratio of Pokemon to humans in the show. 
And as you can see, I'm gonna have some trouble figuring out how to show it on screen. So uh, for now, I'm just gonna squish it down and hope for the best. Looking at this, a couple of things stand out to me. We still have that block-like structure from before, but I think the most striking feature is this, uh, I don't know what else to call it other than valley of nothingness. This is the black and white series, and at least as an outsider looking in, it looks like the biggest change in the entire franchise. For example, this was the first series where Team Rocket wasn't really as much of a thing anymore, which we can see in the character chart. This continued into a later series as well, but it was really here in black and white that started. Really, I think I would go so far as to say that despite the fact that I dropped off during the advanced generation, this is really the dividing line between new and old Pokemon. The new series appear much more dense and defined, meaning more reoccurring characters that appeared within their series and then very little outside of it. But the reason that we're seeing this uh, valley of nothingness is that the black and white series reused very little of the Pokemon that appeared in the previous series, focusing instead on new ones. It kind of gave me the sense that it was almost like a soft reboot, and when I went to go look online, that's actually the sentiment I found all over the place. And this series seemed quite a bit more contentious amongst fans. As you can imagine, Pikachu and Meowth show up the most, but I'm actually curious who you think shows up the third most. I asked this to some of my friends, and they had some interesting answers, and I'm really kind of curious to see who you think shows up the third most. I think there's some sort of hindsight bias going on when people answer this, um, so I'm just really curious, uh, but I'll give you a hint. It's this Pokemon right here. Here's the other top Pokemon in terms of appearances as well. They're almost all Pokemon which belong to the cast in some way, which isn't that surprising. But if we restrict it to being the wild or non-unique Pokemon, this is what the chart looks like instead. Psyduck appears to get a lot of love. I did check because I was worried that this was just Misty Psyduck, but no, it's just random Psyducks appearing. And as you can see, while there are some non-Gen 1 Pokemon like Meryl, Wingull, Patrat, Hooper, and Padove, it is mostly Gen 1. But what if we look at the percentage of episodes they appear in relative to the number of episodes remaining after their initial introduction? That's, that's a bit confusing. Uh, for example, Psyduck has 1,200 episodes that they could potentially appear in after their initial introduction, while Pedov shows up in episode 658, meaning that there's only 573 episodes that they could appear in. So just take the total number of appearances and divide by the possible number of appearances. Now, this actually has the opposite problem in that it will bias towards Pokemon that appear right at the end of the series, but if we again specify that we only want those that appear 10 or more times, we get this table. I think this kind of gives us a better look at how the preferences of the producers of the show change as the series continues. And despite Pat Rat now coming out on top, it is clear that the producers do actually really seem to like Psyduck and Oddish quite a lot. The last thing that I wanted to talk about was the reoccurrence factor for Pokemon, just like we had for humans. Ash's Butterfree here is the winner by a landslide. Uh, here are the episodes that Ash's Butterfree appears in, and for you uh, Poke fans who dropped off like me, who were wondering whether or not they get back together, I checked and essentially all of them were flashbacks. Slightly disappointing. Except for that last one, episode 1,221, exactly 1,200 episodes after Butterfree leaves, they are reunited. And I thought that was nice. But you really took your sweet time there, didn't you? Uh, hello everyone, uh, I hope you enjoyed the video, I enjoyed making it. Like I said, if you're a huge Poke fan, maybe there wasn't anything new there for you, but I hope you enjoyed the different approach at looking at it. Either way, if you're here right now, thanks for giving the video a shot. Anyway, I said at the start that I was going to be changing my channel icon, and actually probably the channel name as well, but I did also want to talk a bit about the content I'll be making. So far I've made three videos on anime related topics, and while those have been fun, I don't want this to be an anime focused channel. Channel. I like anime, but I'd never call myself the biggest fan, and honestly, this channel was never supposed to be viewed as much as it has. Which, to be clear, I am thankful for that, but honestly, I would just get bored. Um, I like stuff like this, stats and just deep diving into a thing and just having kind of fun with it, and I want to have that freedom to be able to do that, regardless of what that topic is, because honestly, 
I just find everything interesting. Um, it's just kind of fun to do. I do have at least two more anime related videos, one about competitive Pokemon and another one on One Piece. And it's not like I'm going to stop doing stats analysis of TV shows. Like they are fun to do. Uh, but I think that the next video will be intentionally non-anime. Um, hopefully you're down for that, but I so understand if you're not. Anyway, um, I think that's it. Uh, see you all later. And yeah, I guess if you made it all the way here, the answer was Jesse's Wobbuffet.